Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV. As you may remember, I was at Silencer Co. a couple of months ago, got to hang out with the guys there, had a fantastic time. You go into the basement at Silencer Co. and it is the place dreams are freaking made out of. They have what we've been calling the Bat Cave around TFB, a wall of every single gun you have ever wanted to shoot in your entire life, plus all the Silencer Co. suppressors and all that good stuff, including a lot of weird odds and ends. So I was there talking with Beaver, and that's who I'm, I'm interviewing in this video today, is a guy named Beaver. Beaver is like the caretaker of the Bat Cave. He's the gun guy around there at Silencer Co. He's got literally the best job in the world. He is like the Silencer Co. Hagrid or whatever the guy from Harry Potter is. But Beaver is a cool dude, a lot better looking than Hagrid. And we're talking, and I'm like, Beaver, there have got to be like five surprisingly good guns to suppress, like five weird guns that just suppress well for whatever reason. And he said, oh yeah, and started walking around the wall and picking out different guns. So I decided to interview him about it. That's what today's video is about. One note before we kick into the video, we fired these guns in the range of the Batcave. Dude, that thing is like a concrete box. So sometimes like you hear people whenever we shoot indoors with suppressors, people are like, oh my God, that suppressor sucks. It's like, no, the acoustics just suck. Point is, I don't want anyone to make any judgments about the suppressors on today's video because we were firing them in a literal concrete box. But today on TFB TV, the five weirdest guns that suppress kind of well. All right, first up, we've got our VZ61, 32 ACP. Country of origin is uh, the Czech Republic. And uh, cyclic rate, I honestly couldn't tell you. <laughs> Pretty awesome little sub gun. This one is a uh, select fire. Uh, we actually had this quite a while ago that we thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to three lug the thing. So a lot of the three lugs on the market had uh, a disproportionate length on uh, where it indexes to the stock. So we uh, basically came out with our own three lug that allows us to still get a full travel on the mount and you can also bump that stock out without it being impeded. We currently have it outfitted with our Omega 9K which currently is the best sub gun can on the market. It does shoot a little bit quicker suppressed because it is a direct blowback system. Without the can the cyclic rate will be a little bit slower because it doesn't have that increased back pressure. Um, so it, it's still going to be controllable with the can, even though it's just a wire stock, like you'd be surprised at how controllable these things are. So your ejection port is coming out the top. So one of the things that I've noticed is uh, gas can be a little annoying when shooting suppressed. It'll also launch your brass. So if you're in an indoor range, you're actually going to want to watch where your lights are because it will launch the brass. The only downside I would say is is a slight increase in back pressure, so gas in the face, and uh, and that brass ejection is pretty pretty wild. I mean, it was designed to keep in a coat and like literally pull out and just spray. I don't think they're really aiming to have it very precise. Do you know how hard it is to get one of those these days? Uh, at least this one, since this is uh, auto, it's very hard. The suppressor I would run on this thing would be uh, the Omega 9K. Um, it's just all around a great SMG suppressor. It's it's stupid quiet. What, what was it, Goldeneye? Uh, God damn it, what did they call it? What did they call it? It was the Clob, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Clob. Yeah. Let's say that too. <laughs> yeah, bring that up. That's a good addition. <laughs> that catch my attention, Goldeneye? Yeah. <laughs> okay, number two, uh, we have the non NMFA Maxim, which isn't quite uh, ready for the market yet. Um, cool things about this is, of course, it runs off of the same delayed blowback system as, as the Maxim 9. Um, still has the fixed barrel spacer. Still has the non-reciprocating red dot. Um, and cool thing is, is with the fixed barrel is uh, you can actually three, three lug this as well. So one of the only pistols that you can actually have a QD system on. Obviously it's gonna be a lot quieter, much like the MP5. 
Um, so most of your gases are exiting through the can and not coming back towards the shooter. So your, your uh, gas blowback is actually also redirected towards your hand. I mean, we've, we've gone as far as to actually put a harvester big bore on it, which I wouldn't recommend <laughs> because it's a 338 suppressor. Um, but yeah, depending on your can, uh, you'll get anywhere from mid 130s down to high 120s. Still runs the same uh, Glock mag. Turns out it's actually awesome with night vision. So you uh, have a very rigid base. Uh, this is all uh, 7075 aluminum. Once you uh, throw your infrared laser on there, like you're not gonna budge or move your zero at all. Another thing to note is uh, with the uh, height of the barrel in conjunction with your iron sights, you don't have any issues of running uh, larger diameter cans. You'll still be able to see over the suppressor. Then moving on to the Calico. Yeah, another direct blowback. This thing's just fun because of its mag capacity and the design of the magazine. I mean, helical mags are, are pretty awesome. It, it's kind of practical. If, if you only plan on going out with one magazine, like that, that's enough that you need for one range day, right? So, um, or if you just don't like reloads, so. <laughs> I know they did like a nine mil version, but sadly we haven't been able to get our hands on, on the nine mil yet. One of the weird things about this platform is it's actually shredded in aluminum, and then you have your barrel on the inside. So this has what we call our sparrow thread. So it's basically a half 28 thread, but it allows for an O-ring engagement, which will create a seal so you don't get any fouling or carbon built up on your threads. So we've got on here uh, our Sparrow, which is our uh, flagship 22 can that we actually started out with, um, easiest to clean can on the market where it is four pieces. You got uh, the clamshell half pipes. With it being a 22 LR, the one the one downside is one, it's, it is an older gun and reliability with 22 has kind of always been an issue. When you shoot suppressed 22, like you're depositing lead everywhere. And most of the time, even unsuppressed, like lead is gonna build up. So you definitely wanna make sure that you have a good cleaning regimen. If you clean that thing right now and we loaded up 100 rounds, took it out there on the range, how many malfunctions will we get in the first magazine? I would wager to guess maybe four or five. <laughs> got a malfunction. And then moving on to some of the more uh, uh, favorable hosts for shooting suppressed, um, mainly due to action noise. So this is the Chiapa Little Badger. It's a little single shot 22. Um, it's super tiny, like lightweight. Um, fit it into a backpack, super easy. You just break it open. It's got a little carrier in the back for some spare rounds, so you just pull a bullet out and flip it in the chamber, and then close it and cock it, and you're ready to go. You have absolutely no action noise. The, the loudest part of the gun is gonna be the hammer dropping. Right now we have it outfitted with our uh, latest 22LR product, the Switchback, which is also modular, so if you wanted to, you could uh, make it shorter into each section, and if you want to be stupid quiet, uh, you can put an ablative like wire pulling gel inside of it, run it in the short configuration, and it'll still be super quiet. Would you say that's the quietest firearm that's in this vault? It's close. We haven't actually sound tested this one with a switchback. Um, the quietest we actually have is probably our CZ, uh, the 455. Oh my God, you can hear it hit the can. <laughs> One of the interesting things, at least about the switchback, is if you reverse the baffles, we found that it actually gets us uh, quieter than the hammer dropping. Mm. So if you were to dry fire, essentially, dry firing on an empty chamber is louder than the shot that we were metering.
the new hotness, which is lever actions. This is the uh, um, Mad Pig Customs 4570 um, with more of a modern angle. You've got the M-lock rail on there and also outfitted with our hybrid 46, which also has QD mount, so we also offer brakes for it. Um, so you can run a, a muzzle brake, which also, if you, if you don't like shooting suppressed and like being noisy at the range, the brake does great with 4570. You have no action noise. So the hammer dropping is gonna be the loudest, well, if you're running subs, it'll be the loudest uh, part of the gun to the shooter. So, a um, little bit faster than a bolt action, but same action noise and muzzle noise as most of your bolt action rifles. It's a heavy round, so uh, we've actually seen these taken out on like hog hunts, or I mean most of your hunts. So if, if you want to have a very heavy projectile that you don't have any concern with uh, just wounding the animal, like this is likely to put them down. Um, Plus 4570, like, much like 45 ACP, uh, a lot of them are slower, so most of your ammo will come out subsonic, which lends itself to being a better suppressor host. I shoot mostly semi-auto rifles um, and semi-auto handguns, so like I kind of shied away from the the cowboy market, as you, as you would call it. But uh, after we suppressed them, it started to actually lead into like, holy cow, like these are really quiet, and and you can still shoot relatively quick. So having that edge of no action noise is definitely a benefit. So a lot of the times the shooter when they're shooting suppressed most of what they hear is action noise so when you're actually using a lever action they're actually pretty quiet um, and when you fire obviously you don't have a reciprocating bolt so it's a lot quieter than a, than a uh, semi-auto and uh, when you move over to a bolt action like sometimes this is a lot faster than working a bolt. So I would say this is kind of your in-between of a bolt action and a semi-auto, but still a, a great suppressor host. You can get a lever action through a Marlin or a Mad Pig Customs um, and have them in 3030, 357, uh, 4570. Like there are a lot of offerings as far as your calibers go, uh, and they all lend themselves to actually being suppressed. Who to thunk? Is there any gun that you would like? to add to the collection here? What's the next gun to add to the collection uh, for a well, suppressor? We're always looking at all the different operating systems. So you can see on our wall, like we have a pretty good library of, of operating systems. So one of the things that we like to test is to see how each operating system will change your suppression. So one of the, one of the guns that I think we're missing right now is, is the FAL um, and we could use uh, H and K, their prototype. What is that? The caseless. Oh, oh G11. yeah, the G11. Like yeah, G11 like would be great. <laughs> although, although with the G11, the the one thing that I would shy away from, uh, as far as suppressing that, is like its common problem was all that caseless ammo was combusting inside their operating system. If you add more back pressure to that. Who even knows what would happen? <laughs> Truly, I really appreciate you taking the time to take all this down and, and talk to us about it. Yeah. So that was perfect. Yeah.